recognize the uh, final member of the committee of the subcommittee to uh, to ask questions before we reach the uh, the guests. Uh, that's Mr. Crane of Arizona for five minutes of questioning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all for uh, appearing here today uh, before our committee. Um, it, it's true that you guys are under oath. Is that correct? Did yes, I? sir. All right, uh, Miss Dawson. My first question for you for you. Um, What's, uh, what's better, ham or Canadian bacon? <laughs> We're on the clock, Ms. Dawson. I, I have no answer. I have no okay. answer. I All have right. no answer. I can't say that Montreal bagels are better, though. Okay. All right. Moving on to uh, Mr. Judd. Mr. Judd, it's good to see you. I don't know which one of us brought the warm weather from Arizona, but it is nice up here. Mr. Judd, how many years have you uh, been an agent? 25, but I, I'd first like to start. I, I, I'm amazed that a member of Congress can actually impugn somebody's in, um, character without letting that individual answer the question. She said that I repeated uh, white nationalist tropes, when in reality, all I did was repeated what John D. Podesta said. John D. Podesta's think tank said, demographics, I believe that this is a direct quote, demographics is destiny. I had never heard of the great replacement theory until USA Today wrote a story on it. And it's amazing that a congresswoman can impugn somebody's character without even allowing them to answer. I've been a Border Patrol agent for 25 years. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you got to address that. And if you'd like to say anything else on my time, go for it. What else you got? Sorry about that. Now, um, how long have you been representing Border Patrol agents in the uh, National Border Patrol Council? I've been in a, in a position one or the other for about 15 years, approximately. Thank you, sir. Um, would you say you're proud of your job? And if so, why? Very, very proud of my job. I think that it's very important for the safety and security of the American people. I think you told me a couple of years ago, sir, uh, the first time I ever met you, that your organization um, has endorsed candidates from both parties. Is that correct? We have. So would you say that your organization is bipartisan? It absolutely is. That's weird because that doesn't happen a lot up in this town. Can you elaborate on why your organization uh, is bipartisan? We'll work with anybody that wants to secure the border. That's, that's what we want. We work to, to, for the safety and security of the American people. Any law enforcement, when they put on a uniform, what they want to do is they want to protect citizens. And that's what we want to do and we'll work with anybody that will work with us. Thank you, sir. Uh, would you agree with Secretary Mayorkas' assessment that we have, a op we have operational control at the southern border? Absolutely not. Um, can you briefly describe some of the most detrimental policy changes that current administration has put into place? When you look at the, the main magnet that draws people to cross our borders illegally is whether or not they're going to be released into the United States. Right now, nearly everybody that crosses the border illegally, if they're not expelled under Title 42, which is only about 30 percent right now, then they're released into the United States. That's the main magnet that, that, that drives people. And he has, he has put that, if, if you will, he's put that on steroids. Yeah. Does it bother you on a personal level to see these uh, changes uh, made? It does, because it, I know that we can't properly protect the American people with these policies. Yeah, one of the things that was covered earlier, sir, was uh, the attrition rate in the Border Patrol. In your professional um, and longstanding position in the Border Patrol, do you think that has anything to do with Border, Patr border Patrol agents feeling like no, it doesn't even matter what they it, do. It does. I speak with agents on a regular basis that, that are leaving the agency because they know that they can't do the job that they, that they wanted to do. That's got to be kind of heartbreaking to somebody who's, you know, devoted so much of your time yes. and life, sacrificed time away from your family to protecting American citizens. It is. Yeah. Um, sir, do you know when uh, President Biden's first visit to the border was? Was it January 23rd? It was, yes. Yep. So how, how many years into his presidency was that, sir? And, uh, just over two years. Do you know how many, do you know how many trips uh, President Trump made to the border, Mr. Judd? I, I don't know exactly, but I know that he made multiple trips. Yeah, we were looking it up this morning. I think it was a, about five. Yeah. Um, do you think it has, as a leader yourself, do you think it has anything to do um, with leadership um, if you actually show up to the places that you represent and the people that uh, follow you, see you show up? Yeah, any time that you know that, that somebody supports what you're doing, what your mission is, you're, you're going to be a lot more energized to do the job. Awesome. Mr. Arthur, my last question is for you. Uh, my colleague over here from Michigan, Mr. Uh, Thanator, showed a video of some vehicles going over a bridge um, in Michigan and then stated that this is hardly a picture of disorder. 
And I, I asked a couple other members if, if they got the same implication that I did that, hey, it doesn't really, because of the video I'm showing where cars are going over a border and trucks are going over a border, there's no issue here. When you saw that, what did you think about what did you think about that example that he made in the video that he showed? Do you think that that described the border issues that we have going on here in the United States, sir? Well, actually, uh, the interesting thing is that the conclusion that I drew from that talks about why this important this hearing today was so important. We need to listen to Dr. Dawson, the ranking member, talked about the importance of trade between the United States and Canada. We need to continue that relationship. Our relationship with Canada. Uh, is absolutely crucial to our vitality, our economic vitality. I know that the time is up, I'll make it short. We need to make sure that that continues. I was in, not this building, but two dip buildings down on September 11. Uh, and everything changed that way, certainly changed. I, had, I was oversight counsel for immigration. Um, the dangers that we would have to shut down our economy, shut down our borders, shut down our commerce because something had happened, were real. M uh, Mr. O Sir, I was asking about a specific video. No, it, it, I understand that, uh, but uh, I'm gonna uh, real I mean, quick, real quick. I'm gonna go to Mr. Judd. Mr. I'm Judd, sorry. when you watch that video, uh, it, point, it, point of order. I, I, I gentleman's time's expired. Okay, all right. Uh, I thank the gentleman, and uh, and uh, we're, we're blessed to have.